take a seat? Get comfortable. For those people sitting on stools, if you want a chair where you can rest your back, I'm going to be chewing your ear off for about an hour and ten minutes, so I just want you to be comfortable. So I've just started by thanking Celeste and Laurel and the Me After Work team for organizing everything. They've organized and planned and promoted this event, so big thank you, you've been wonderful, fantastic. And then I want to thank everyone here. Good evening, everybody. How are you all, by the way? Good, good, good. Excited to be here? Yes. Happy? I'm happy to be here. So I want to, first of all, thank everyone for coming out here. Here's another person, Shamal. Shamal, we're going to start once you're in the room. Just to thank you all for coming here tonight and supporting me, but more importantly, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out for yourself. I think it's really fantastic that you've been proactive and that you've actively taken a step to come out here this evening, give up some of your precious time. I was going to say and money, but then I remember this event is free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, to kind of invest in yourself and see what steps you could actively take to make your life better. So I, I honor you for that. All right, so the purpose of tonight's little talk is, as Celeste mentioned, there's a four-day Silver Life Systems and Intuition Workshop coming up at the end of November. So it's two days for Life Systems in November and two days for Intuition Training in December. So tonight is really just a taster or like a preview. Shamal, welcome. Yeah. Oh, Please take a seat. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Just a bit of a taster as to what you can expect. Although I did work out how much I'm sharing of the four-day program in tonight's event, and it's actually only 3%. So I just want to let you know, I'm going to be talking about this roadmap um, to success, but it's about 3% of the content of the Silver Method Life Training. All right, so sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to just start off the evening by saying that science today has proven that each and every one of us have a blueprint for how much we earn, for how much happiness we have, for how much fulfillment we have in our life, for how healthy we are. Now you can call this blueprint your conditioning if you want. It's also termed your programming. And psychologists like to refer to it as your paradigm. So you've all heard about this. So you. Just to let you know, so all of you here have got a certain programming and that determines the results that you have in your life. Now I'm going to just assume, but I'm probably correct, that you all came here tonight because every single one of us have got areas of our life where we want some better results. I do, and I'm sure all of you do. There's some areas. So you came here looking for some tips and techniques to get you that. So what we have to do to change our results, we have to change that blueprint. Thought precedes manifestation. You can't really actively get like significant greater results in life without changing our paradigm, or without changing this blueprint of ours. So your roadmap to success is talking about these four key essential skills that we need to master in order for us to get the results that we want in life and to change this blueprint. That makes sense? Okay. Now, there's a lot of people here in the room who do know me, some very, very well, some not so well. And then for the newbies here tonight, let me just tell you a little, little bit about myself, why I'm here, and what I bring to Silver. Now, I know I can tend to be a little bit long-winded, <coughs> but I'll try and keep it short. But even though the story of mine maybe longer than expected, is not just that I want to blah, 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 and talk the whole night about myself. The story is for a purpose. And it's to try to maybe share what I've gone through, and hopefully I can connect with you in some way that you can relate to my story. And if this story can be beneficial to you in any way, then I'll be happy about that. Okay? So tonight, really, my intention is to... Encourage all of you, inspire you, and motivate you to take some steps in your life for a better life. And if I can do that, if I just give you one tip 
or strategy for your own life that can help you that would make you the most happy. All right, so I'll start off going back about five years or so in my life. About five years ago, my life was in the worst place it's ever been in my entire life. Okay? I wasn't happy at all. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this. Or you've had a time in your life maybe where you were failing. And it's not like you weren't trying. You were giving it your best shot. You were even reaching out for help. But you just couldn't make a success of it. Well, that was me. I was in a new job, in a new company, in a role I'd never done. I changed industry and I also emigrated, so I was in a new country. And everything was just so overwhelming for me. And the, and the, the mountain of um, material, the volume of material that I had to get my head around and the learning curve were all just too steep for me. And the company that I worked for also gave me the largest account, so there was added pressure on me to perform. Plus the account I took over was in a terrible place. So there was more pressure on me to perform. And then, just to make matters a little bit worse, my client, as I started in the job, tried to hire me. And of course I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I've just taken this new job. So from that day on, she never built any relationship with me, never came to one meeting, never answered an email, which made it even more difficult for me to make a success. So things just got worse and worse, and as I started feeling like a failure, I permanently went around with this feeling of anxiety, which I've never actually really experienced much in my entire life. It was every day. I used to go to bed like that. I used to wake up in the night, I couldn't sleep, I had the stress and the nerves. Every day, and it got worse and worse. Now this continued for a period of about 18 months, to the point that I became so stressed out, I actually became physically ill. And I was also quite ill for an extended period of time, which is really very bad for the body to be sick for an extended period of time. So, for me, being in this place where I felt like an absolute failure, the truth is it got so bad, I was actually afraid of being fired at work. Now, some of you might be surprised, but that's the truth. Now, this was a... Welcome. Thank you. This, for me, was an absolute shock. And I'll give you two reasons why it was a shock for me. The first reason was, if anyone knew me when I was a small child, or in my younger years, or when I was a child, I was really very short. <laughs> Actually, I was so short that you could stand in a chair to scratch my own head. But that's not what I was trying to say. Um, I was really very feisty. I was very um, energetic. I was a positive, determined, persistent little thing. In fact, I was in a Catholic school, in, in primary school, and my principal, an old man named Brother Patrick, he used to call me the little toughy on the green and yellow bicycle. Because I was, a, I was a tough little thing. I was, I was very resilient. And a very persistent child and very, very positive. Now, this positivity and determination served me well my whole life. I did well at school. I did well in really every job I've ever had. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you truthfully. I had ambitions to move up in corporate and slowly but surely over the years. I did really well. I was happy with where I was going. So for me, suddenly, bam, here I am, about five years ago, to find myself in a place where I... I'm telling you, I felt like an absolute failure. I was so sick and I'd lost all my confidence. I could hardly speak to a room of three people. And a year before that, I was talking to audiences of 800. And the worst thing about this was I came to a point in my life where I didn't even recognize who I'd become. And this really scared me. And the second reason why I was so shocked, this is about 2010, 2011, is that back in 2006, I watched the movie The Secret. Who's seen that movie? Okay, let me ask the right question. Who hasn't seen that movie? Okay, all of you who haven't seen it, I really urge you, go and watch that movie. I'm not saying it's the be-all and end-all, but the good thing about watching the movie, The Secret, is it creates an awareness that we create our own reality. We create our own reality with our thoughts and with our feelings. And the movie is really about the law of attraction, so it says... You get what you think about, whether you want it or not. In other words, if you say, I don't want debt, I don't want debt, you're going to get debt. You get what you think about, whether you want it or not. So when I saw the movie The Secret in 2006, it absolutely changed my life. 
is a documentary and it features these world-renowned teachers and speakers. So I started to study those people's material as much as I could. I got my hands on everything I could read, watch, study. So I ended up, out of whatever lie, I've got DVDs, I've got audio books, I've got paperbacks, I've got home study programs, I've got the lot. And I'll tell you, when I started studying The Secret, my life just got better and better. I enjoyed learning all these techniques, and it was honestly, I felt like I was riding a wave. Some friends used to say, oh, you've got a lucky star shining over you. No, I kind of started to apply what they taught in The Secret, how to create your own reality, visualizing, um, things like that. So for me to suddenly land in a place where I was so stuck and failing, and I had all this knowledge and all this material and these books and DVDs, I couldn't understand how this was me and I couldn't get out of it for 18 months. So, the situation was really bad. I don't know if it was intuition or someone above was looking over me, but one night being really desperate, I somehow came across the Silver Method website while looking on the internet for help. And when I was on the website, I read the review there of a guy whose story sounded just like mine. He wrote there that he was doing so badly in his sales job, he was afraid of being fired. And I thought, wow, it sounds like me. But then he wrote there, after doing the Silver Method program, he became the top salesperson in his company in just six months. I was so desperate. I thought, I have to get this program. So I got the Silver Method home study course. Every single day, I applied that program. I woke up earlier than I normally wake up. I woke up at 5 a.m. every day. I listened to all the educational material for an hour and a half. I did the meditations. I did the exercises every single morning without fail. I did them every night when I went to bed. If I had time in the day, I'd do them again. I listened to that program over and over and over. Without realizing it, I was busy reprogramming my mind. That blueprint I was talking about, I was literally, re literally rewiring my, my blueprint for success. Anyway, five months later, my boss sent an update on the team sales. So I get the email and the subject heading line reads, Janine is leading the charge. So then, what's this about? So I opened the email, it was a time of the Melbourne Cup horse race. And my boss had put a picture of a couple of horses crossing the finish line. And he cropped all the heads of the jockeys out and he put the sales team's photos on there. And then I saw my own face on the winning horse going over the finish and I thought, there's no way, me? You know, here I was like, scared I'm gonna be fired five months before, thinking could it possibly be, oh my goodness, the silver method, oh, is this a manifestation, is this happening? It was. Five months later, I became top salesperson in the company. I ended that year achieving 187% of my sales target. And the year after that, I did even better. And I never looked back. My, honestly, my life just got better and better after that. My health came back. I was in perfect health. I was happy. I got my confidence back. I was back speaking to audiences of 2,000 people. I got my confidence back. Now, I'm not telling you this to impress you guys. I'm not. I'm telling you this to impress upon you that the silver method works. I told you, I had audios and DVDs and, um, what's it, how to manifest your desires and um, infinite possibilities, the art of creating your dreams. I had books, programs, and nothing worked. When I got the silver method, my life turned around in just five months. And the reason I think the silver method works is for two reasons. The first one is, it's structured. You know, if you see the movie The Secret, they tell you you can do, be, or have anything. But they don't tell you how. I don't know how many people are talking on stage and motivating all of us to live the big life. But they don't tell you how. The silver method is a structured program. If you can't sleep, this technique. If you want to achieve a goal, this technique. If you want to solve a problem, this technique. If you're trying to make a decision, you don't know if it's this path or this path for you, this technique. You've got headaches, this technique. Whatever it is, it's structured. And the steps are easy to learn, but we have to apply them. Now, I'm not saying this turnaround in my life was easy. It wasn't easy because you go from someplace to somewhere else. What I'm telling you is 
got, you've got to apply it yourself. You get the tools and techniques, but it's up to us to apply them. So that's the first reason. It's structured. The second reason why I believe the silver method is so good, it's scientifically proven, it's all evidence-based, and it's been around for 50 years. I don't know many personal development programs that are around today that have been around for five decades. And it was researched by the man himself, Jose Silva, he's the man who started it back in the 1950s. He researched it for 20 years before it became a public program. And then it's been around for 50 years. So the thing is, I gave me confidence and then I thought to myself, when this, when this happened to me, I thought to myself, wow, I just want to share this with everyone. This has helped me so much. I don't know why I never heard about it before. So out of gratitude, I wrote an email to Silver International Head Office in the US. I'll just tell you before that. At the end of every CD, so I had the home study program, at the end of every CD it says, for guaranteed success with your silver techniques, do the silver method live training. Because I have the home study program. So I went online, I wanted to do the home study program. There was no one in Australia doing it. So when I wrote to Silver International, I just put in the subject line, it would be my dream to be a silver trainer. I just said, I'm so thankful for this program. It changed my life. It turned things around. I wish I could share it with everyone. And there's no trainer in Australia. I would, I would teach people if I could. Anyway, I didn't know if I expected them to write back to me. But they did write back to me. And I eventually got in contact with the global training director, a guy named Ken. And we started to Skype each other and we built a relationship. And he took a liking to me. And then he said, you know, if you want to be a silver instructor, you can. You just got to do the life training five times and then you do the instructor's course. I thought, you know, that's actually a, that's a beautiful thing. So I thought it's a medium to long-term plan. Anyway, <coughs> when everything came right for me and I got over that hump and I'm back on my feet again, I don't know if it was intuition or what it, or, or what it was, but I somehow just had this feeling. I was just guided to kind of take a step in my life that was something... I don't even know why I did it, which was to join the John Maxwell team. Now, for those who don't know who he is, he's the world's number one leadership author and speaker. And I've joined his global team, so I went over to the US, got trained by John, got certified. And I'm telling you, if it was intuition or guidance from above, I don't know, it was probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. I was fulfilled, I became a better person because of it. I learned so much from a personal development point of view. I don't think I've ever grown that much in my whole life. So while I was busy getting all this value added to me, I thought, what, what can I do with this? How can I share it? Here I was in a corporate job. So I just thought I'll, I'll start teaching it in corporate or do talks on it in Toastmasters or whatever I could, which is a speaking platform for people who want to improve their public speaking at Toastmasters. So at work, I did a talk on John Maxwell at lunch on some leadership things. Then I offered like a program at night for 12 weeks and I did it more and more at home with Skype with people in South Africa and then suddenly I realized for the first time in my life this thing about helping others and adding value to other people and helping them be more successful this really gives me the most fulfillment this really gives me the feeling that my life has some meaning some people call it life purpose that's how I felt so then for the first time in my life, the idea popped in my head to maybe leave this corporate job and go do this and teach people and help people by speaking and training. Now, you can call me a corporate monkey or a corporate junkie, but I never thought I'd ever leave corporate. I was in corporate for 20 years and there was like, I can't work for myself. I'm not, I'm not no entrepreneur. Who's going to pay for my speaking? But this feeling wouldn't leave me. I was so fulfilled, I was so inspired by teaching and training and coaching. This feeling was rising in me and I couldn't shed it even if I tried. And then one day I thought to myself, Janine, this is a limiting belief that you can't work for yourself, that you can't get out of corporate. You've got the silver program. You can overwrite the limiting belief, just reprogram for it. So that's what I did, okay? Got clear on my goal and started to use the silver techniques. I applied them to overwrite this and think somehow, I didn't know how, but somehow I wanted to get out of corporate and, and work for myself. And then I was doing it and I realized 
I'm not really doing it every single day and I wanted things to change quicker. And then I remembered something called the 30 day principle. And basically science and neuroscience have proven today that if you do something, some technique or visualize or whatever it is, every single day, without missing one day, for 30 days, you create a new neurological pathway. You actually rewire the brain. So I did. I took I saw the technique, and what I did was I took my iPhone and I opened an app and I wrote the date to make sure I didn't miss a day. Put the date in the morning, did my technique. Next morning, put the date, did my technique. Next morning, put the date, did my technique. Eventually I checked, I think it was about day 18 or something, I missed a day. So what did I do? Any guesses? Started started again. Again. Them all started again. Did it a second time. Got to about day 23, 24. Missed it again. Did it, them all started again. Eventually I crossed my 30 day threshold. I got to about 36. And true as can be, four weeks later, the biggest blessing just showed up in my life. I got the opportunity to do something that I'm really passionate about and I love to do, which is selling investment property. And it doesn't take that much time, and the money's okay, so now I've all this time freed up to do this that I love to do. So, that's basically my story, but it gets just a little bit better. <coughs> I was busy with the John Maxwell team, so my life had different plans and priorities for the next year or two, once I turned my situation around back in 2012. But I still had this thing, I have to go and do the Silver Life training. So luckily I got the opportunity in 2015. So I went over to Chicago and I did the Silver Life training with Ken, the guy I built the relationship with. And I'm telling you, it was the four most phenomenal days of my life. All I can say is it was transformational. And then we spoke again about me becoming a silver trainer. And he said again, you've got to do it five times, so you've now done it once. So I thought it'll take me about five years or so because I've got to keep going to the US. Anyway, things turned out a bit better than expected because Ken and Laura Silver, the president of Silver International, emailed me just a few months ago and they said, Janine, we really believe in you. We want you part of the team. If you can come to the US this year, we'll put you through an, in, an intensive instructor training and we'll certify you. So ladies and gentlemen, that's my story. I'm standing here today in front of you, literally living the dream that I put down on paper back in 2012. And I'm not telling you this because I'm trying to brag. I'm telling you this is because why I'm standing here as a silver instructor is I want the same for everybody I know. If I could teach everybody these techniques and help all of you overcome your limiting beliefs and things standing in your way, that's why I'm here. I'm here with my heart. I'm here with my head. I'm here in spirit. I'm here in full body and mind. So, and I'm here in body. What an illusion. Excuse me, I'm a heavy drinker. <laughs> it's gin in here. No, I'm joking. Okay. So tonight we're going to talk about your roadmap to success. And it's these four key essential tools that we need, which I'm sure you saw with the email when you booked. The first one is to stay calm and focused, even under pressure. The second one is to become clear on what we want in life, clear on our goals, and then actually achieve them, and achieve them quickly. I don't know how many of you have ever had a goal. I've done this before. You've had a goal, but the more you thought about it, the more you kind of talked your way out of it, and you eventually never did it. Anyone here had that? Mm -hmm. I've had that. Okay? The third one is huge. Overcoming limiting beliefs. This is so big. And the thing about this is we don't even know what our limiting beliefs are most of the time. No. Unless we have a good coach. <laughs> okay? Then the fourth one is to help us to be successful in life. Is to be able to make good decisions. And also to be able to recognize opportunities. But how do we do that? So the way we do that is to access our creativity and our intuition. So I'm going to take you through these four steps in a bit of detail. <coughs> Thank you, Celeste, for the notepads and the pencils. Take notes, guys. Feel free. Um, I'm just going to say something now. 
No, that's his all. Come to me. Okay. So let's start off at the top. Staying calm and focused even under pressure. I have to say that I think this is probably the most essential skill that you can develop in your life. Who here, I don't have to tell you, knows that all illness, all illness, disease, and wellness comes from stress. Okay, so it's about being more healthy. The other thing is, we want to learn to stay calm and focused even under pressure. Okay? All right. So, we can do a little bit of self-awareness here. Let's just start off asking each other. Just shout out to me. How would you know if you were stressed? Give me some, some physical or emotional signs that you can just think of that would indicate that you have stress. Headaches. Headaches? Headaches, yeah. Tummy aches. Tummy aches? I want to give you a high five. Can I just tell you? <laughs> Thank you, Enrico. When I was in the silver training in Connecticut, we had about four, or, we had six children for the life systems and four children for the full four days. The best students in the room were children. And the best student in the room was ten and a half. How old are you, Enrico? Eight. You're eight. Ten. Excellent. So, by the way, if anyone here has got children, the best gift you can give your kids is teaching them these techniques young, because we know how we struggle in our life. Okay, so headaches, tummy aches, what else? A stiff neck, ice pain. Yes, ice pain. I get a stiff neck, I can't move. Right, we feel tension, we feel stiff, we feel sore. What else? Not sleeping. Not sleeping. How many of you here struggle with sleep? sleep Either to go to sleep or you wake up and you can't go back to sleep because you have a ruminating, anxious thought. Anything else? No more ideas? You're worried. You're worried. I've got a list, Jeff. You can't make rational decisions. Exactly. You can't think clearly when you're stressed. Can't be straight. Isn't it true that when we're stressed, mm, true. we make the most mistakes? Mm. We're the most forgetful? Yeah. Mm. We have accidents? Overwhelmed. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Being overwhelmed, that feeling that you can't cope. That year that I was doing so badly, I had that anxious feeling all the time. It actually was such a prolonged period of anxiety, it became my new emotional set point. Mm. I went to see a naturopath. This became my new, my new me, and I had to actually you know, work on myself to get it back. Yep. Okay, what about things like um, getting easily angered? Mm -hmm. Mm. Or being impatient. Mm. Yep. Short-tempered. Short -tempered, irritable. Um, what about the inability to laugh? Mm -hmm. You watch a funny movie and you go, yeah, don't laugh. <laughs> or someone tells a joke, it's like, ha ha, big joke. You can't laugh, everyone else packing it out, you know? Or the inability to cry. I don't know about you, but I know some people... Sorry to talk about this, but they've lost someone in their life. Someone's passed away and they, they can't even cry. It's a sign of severe stress. Mm -hmm. You can't express your emotions. The other one is the opposite. When you just cry, you cry for the easiest thing. You can't cry for the smallest thing. Yeah? Um, what about this um, constant fatigue? Mm -hmm. How many of you come back from work on a Monday and you feel tired already? It's just Monday. And every day it gets worse and worse. By the time Friday comes, you're like, just want to flake out. Like, you know, give me a break. Let the weekend come. You're so tired. This is a good one. Most um, psychologists and psychotherapists, when they're treating people for anxiety and depression, they say one of the first symptoms is shortness of breath, you know, shallow breathing in the upper chest. This is welcome the person is here. Um, what about waking up in the morning and not feeling refreshed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are some of the emotional, excuse me, and physical symptoms. Now let's talk about some of the behaviors that we might adopt when we're feeling stressed. The first one's my favorite. Alcohol. <laughs> okay, I'm only kidding. I love a glass of wine once a week or once every two weeks with my dinner. 
but it's a completely different thing when you're so stressed out that you feel that you need to have a drink just to get some release and you keep thinking I want to have another drink and you keep on going for a drink just to kind of a form of escape that's not healthy that's a sign of stress or what about caffeine nothing wrong hello welcome Hello. Hi, how Hi, are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Oh, okay, sorry. Caffeine. Nothing wrong if you're having a coffee a day, maybe two. It's a different thing where you feel you have to have a cup of coffee or you make excuses. I'm so numb-headed. I haven't had my first coffee this morning. You're making mistakes and you've got to have another one and you've got to have another one. By the afternoon, you're feeling tired and you feel like you've got to keep shooting back coffees just to, just to keep going. You can't go without them. You're having more and more. Another one is... Um, chocolate. Chocolate's good. You can all have, enjoy a piece of chocolate. But when you crave chocolate and it's a bit of an obsessive behavior and you, you eat it like comfort food, then it's not okay. <coughs> or for anyone that still smokes today, smoking. Now, there's a reason why we resort to alcohol, caffeine, smoking. What's the other one? Chocolate. Excellent listening. Chocolate. Do you know what the reason is that we do these things? It's a habit. No? It's a blocking mechanism. No? It's pleasurable. It's comfort. Yes. Who said that? Mm -hmm. Right. It causes the brain to release two chemicals. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the names. Mm -hmm. But it's serotonin and dopamine. And these chemicals affect the brain. They make us feel happier. And they make us sleep well. Now comes the best part. I want you all just to take a big deep breath. <sighs> Let it out through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle. Now take a slow, deep belly breath in. Hold it for a second or two. And then just let it out <sighs> through your mouth. Doesn't it feel good? Mm -hmm. Take another two or three breaths. Keep going. It feels good, right? Did you know that taking in a deep breath is a natural antidote to stress? And did you know that taking in a deep belly breath causes the brain to release serotonin and dopamine? Oh, it's free. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it. you, Laurel. <laughs> so, this is why meditation is so healthy. No one's going to dispute today the benefits of meditation. Science, neuroscience, the medical industry, everyone is agreeing that it's so healthy. Now, how many of you here meditate daily? Very good. How many of you don't? Okay. Awareness is the first step to change. You don't know how. You don't know how. Okay. For those of you who do meditate daily, awesome. Fantastic. Thank you for that and, and, and good on yourselves. And for those who don't, I would really urge you, start adopting the practice of daily meditation. Now, most of you will say, Janine, we know this. Tell me something I don't know. Come all the way out here to listen to you. I'll say, okay, I'll tell you, there's one thing to know this, but it's something else to implement it and to integrate it and to make it a complete part of your life that <coughs> you actually become a person who stays calm and focused even under pressure. So in the silver method, there's some signs up on the wall. It says the silver method makes use of dynamic meditation. So all the exercises are based on some form of meditation when you go into a deep, calm, relaxed state because that's when the subconscious mind is the most receptive to this programming of the blueprint we're talking about. You're changing your behaviors, you're giving yourself codes of success whilst in a calm state. So we do dynamic meditation, we do creative visualization, we do guided imagery, we do mental rehearsal, and then of course, there's also techniques to develop intuition and um, spiritual well-being. So meditation is really something that can honestly, truly improve your life. And they've proven today that people who meditate on a daily basis actually are more healthy, and they actually look younger, and it actually boosts the immune system. It helps you fight off disease and illness. 
And just by the way, the word disease is dis-ease. You don't get sick unless you've got some emotional upset going on. Or you're stressed. There's something uneasy going on to get sick. The body's natural default setting is perfect health. Okay, here are just some typical proven, scientifically proven benefits of meditation. It can lower blood pressure. Just meditating daily for about 30 days, you can lower your, your blood pressure. It can lower your blood sugar. It can lower cholesterol. It can give you more energy. You are talking about that cup of coffee that you got to have when you're feeling tired. I absolutely guarantee you, go to a quiet place for just 10 minutes and take deep breaths and just focus on your breathing. You'll well, come out, you'll feel more awake, more alert, more energized than any cup of coffee can help you out. Headaches. So the Silver Program's actually got a, something called headache control. The guy, Ken, who trained me, the reason he got into Silver, he suffered from such bad migraines. He was on medication. He took tablets at least four out of seven days a week. He couldn't get rid of his migraines. He went into the silver training and slowly doing the exercises, he, he got rid of them more and more, more and more. Eventually he got rid of them completely and he hasn't touched a tablet and he hasn't had a headache in 45 years. And this guy was a chronic headache sufferer. If you meditate, you also sleep better. Wonderful for your sleep. Janine, is that meditate before you sleep? Even if oh, you meditate every morning of your life, you should start sleeping better. Okay. People who come on the silver four days, it's typical. Every morning when we get back in class, we say, any breakthroughs? We start the day like that. Any, any breakthroughs? And you're here, everyone says, oh, I've never slept that well. They're all sleeping like babies. You sleep so well. So when you meditate, it's really good for sleep. It gives you more energy. Who here said you can't think if you're stressed? Mm. It makes you more clear-headed, more productive. That feeling of being calm and centered and balanced that you can deal. That time of my life when I was so overwhelmed, the workload didn't change when I got on top of the world. In fact, it got more. But I handled it differently. I felt okay. I was steady on two feet. I didn't feel like the world's, you know, getting me down. The other thing about meditation is, for those of you who meditate, you'll absolutely relate to this. You start getting this feeling of inner peace, and serenity and calmness in your life as a general state of the way life generally becomes for you. And the other thing is synchronicities, where you just find lucky coincidences kind of happening. Things start working out for you. Things just start to seem easier. You kind of get this feeling that the universe has got your back. That's what happens with daily meditation. So. The one thing that we can do to stay calm and focused is to meditate daily. Okay, the second thing, words. We actually had a me after work quarterly catch up with the people at the weekend retreats here on Saturday and there was a discussion in the room about words so you guys know the answer. But for the rest of you, who, who have you heard that words can affect your brain. Blanca, by the way, has been on the silver training. Somebody here in the room. Just want to mention that. Um, so words can change your brain. Anyone here heard that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is now not semantics. This is science. <coughs> science today has proven that words can actually affect the brain. Just to give you a small example. Just the word no causes the brain to release several stress chemicals. Just the word no, just like that. There's actually a book out, which if any of you are interested, it's really good. It's called How Words Can Change the Brain by Dr. Mark Waldman and Dr. Andrew Newberg. So I'm going to give you a quick technique now. Let me <coughs> start off by saying, one of the most important things you could ever learn in your life is that the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between imagination and reality. For anyone here who's making notes, this is the one thing that you really should write down. The subconscious mind cannot distinguish between imagination and reality. And I'll give you a quick example. 
On the silver method, we do this exercise where we all close our eyes and we start using our imagination. And we take a lemon and we pick up a knife in our imagination and we cut up the lemon and we cut it into wedges. And then we pick up one of the wedges of the lemon and then we, we sniff it. Believe it or not, we can smell it. And then we put it in our mouth, we bite it and we suck it. Because I'm telling you this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our glands start to squirt or dry up or curl. Just from the thought of sucking the lemon. Who here, while I was telling you this, felt their glands react? <laughs> okay, a couple of you. Yeah. Now, isn't that interesting? Mm. Just the thought of the lemon caused your <coughs> physiology to change. It caused your body to react. Now this is also a very beautiful thing. Because by the same way, if we know how to use this knowledge about your subconscious mind can't distinguish between imagination and reality, we can start to program this blueprint of ours for success. That's why they train the top athletes in the world today using mental rehearsal and creative visualization. They see themselves running the race. They see themselves scoring the goals. And they find that people who do mental rehearsal for 75% of the training time outperform those that train on the track or train on the field for 100, so 75 mental rehearsal, 25 physical rehearsal. They actually do better. So for ourselves, let's talk about words affecting the brain. Anyone guess how many thoughts we have on day on average? 50,000. Very good. Good guess. 40 to 60,000. Wow. Let's say 60,000 thoughts a day. And do you know what percentage of them, on average, scientifically proven, are negative? 80%. Spot on, Clarissa. 80%. 80% of our thoughts are negative. And we keep convincing ourselves of things we cannot do. Okay, so I'm going to give you a technique now. It's from the Silver Method. We do it in an exercise called mental house cleaning. So if you ever catch yourself saying something negative about yourself or the situation or anything, just say cancel, cancel, reframe and substitute it with a positive statement or a positive affirmation. Especially if you, if you catch yourself saying something negative about yourself, cancel, cancel. And if you're talking to someone, it's gonna probably think you nuts when you're talking to you and you go, cancel, cancel, or he says, you know, I'm so sick and tired of this project, just, you know, cancel, cancel, say, what? Just say it in your head. Don't worry about saying it out loud. Just say it in your head. I'll go do business with someone else who's a bit normal. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you say something like, I don't really sleep well to a friend, just catch yourself. Cancel, cancel. I'm sleeping better and better. Or, I can't learn this. Cancel, cancel. Somehow, some way, I can learn this. I'll give it my best shot. I'll, I'll, I'll do what it takes. So that's the technique. Cancel, cancel, reframe, and substitute. Okay, so staying calm and focused even under pressure. Once we learn to stay calm, this is really the foundation. If we can learn to manage stress, improve our health, and stay calm, it's the foundation for everything else that we want in life to be built upon. If this is not okay, Everything else doesn't really work. And we're not really effective in creating the life that we want for ourselves or improving our health or our situation or our career or our relationships, our spiritual well-being, whatever it may be. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next one. Having clear goals and achieving them quicker. Clear goals. Sounds obvious seems simplistic, right? Have, have clear goals. But did you know, you can ask audiences, who here in the room, if you ask an, an audience, who here in the room can answer immediately, what is it that you really want out of life? 90% can't answer that question in a heartbeat. They've got to think about it. What do I really want out of life? So you've got to, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to be very clear 
very clear as to what, it, what we want because wishy-washy goals have wishy-washy outcomes. So I'm going to give you a quick um, tool here on how you can get clear on your goals. Excuse my back. Um, it's called What Do You Want? Reflection. So I would recommend, take about 15 to 20 minutes and do this exercise. Go somewhere where you won't be disturbed. <coughs> Go somewhere where you can really relax. Sit comfortably. Take a couple of deep breaths and close your eyes. And take deep breaths and keep telling yourself as you breathe in and breathe out, relax. And just relax. Let yourself really relax as if you're in a meditation. And then you're going to ask yourself these four questions. And you're welcome to write them down. And just tell yourself, I'm going to... Remember the answers to these questions, and at the end, I'll then write them down and then crystallize them. Okay, so you don't write while you're busy doing this. And these are the four questions that you ask yourself. The first one is, what do I want to create? And just stay in that meditative state and relax. Just relax, and whatever comes to you, just know that you're going to remember it. And you might find things show up that you didn't even think about. And we use the word create very specifically. Because we know that we're creating our own reality. We, we are not victims of circumstance. If you don't believe me, watch the movie The Secrets. It's all about we create our own reality. Okay, the next question that you ask is, why do I want to create this? I love the word why. For anyone who hasn't seen the TED Talk, Start With Why, by Simon Sinek, it's a great watch. Start With Why. The minute you introduce the word why, you link it to purpose. And when you've got a strong purpose, you're probably going to go after that goal. There's a book by Dr. Viktor Frankl called A Man's Search for Meaning. Many of you may know the book or have read the book. And he writes in that book, if your why is strong enough, you'll overcome any how. Okay? So we link it to purpose. Ask yourself, what do I want to create? Why do I want to create this? The next question you ask is, what strengths and talents do I have to create this? And that's a beautiful thing. We're looking for our strengths here. We're looking for our God-given talents. Some people say, you know, fix up your weaknesses and do courses. Rubbish. You work in your strength zone. There's no mistaking that the way we all created, we were given some strengths and some talents and gifts. We are here to develop those and we're here to express those in our own unique way. We could have the same skill or talent. Let's say it's Luke. Him and I could both be musically talented. But the way he'll express it or the way I express it will never be the same. It's unique to us. Okay, so we want to see what we're strong at. And it also gives us confidence and motivation to achieve our goal. And the last thing is, how does it relate to others? The minute we can start seeing our goals and how they relate to others, it gives us a stronger sense of purpose. So I'll give an example. Let's say you wanted to... Um, increase your income. What would you do? How would it relate to others? Maybe you could give some of it away and help people less fortunate than you. If you got one of the goals in your life and made you happier, don't you think that there would be an extended benefit to your family, maybe the people that you work with? So we're looking for an extended benefit when we say, how does it relate to others? Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay. The next thing is how to achieve them quicker. One word. Gratitude. Okay, of course when you've got goals and you are doing a meditation, you probably can visualize daily. We do have techniques in the silver method to program to achieve the goals. I'm just talking about gratitude here because gratitude... <coughs> is one of the most powerful states that we could be in. It's like the best energy state you could be in when you're feeling the best is when you're expressing gratitude and appreciation. They've actually proven that it, in, it enhances the immune system. Now, if you talk about the movie The Secret where they say you get what you think about whether you want it or not, it's a law of attraction here. We're living in a universe of energy. What you're feeling 
or what you're thinking or what you're worrying about, you're going to attract more of that. So if you're worrying about something, it's kind of healthy to worry about it. You're attracting more things to make you worry. So getting into a gratitude state, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to bring more things into your life to make you grateful. And it also makes you focus on what you do have right now. Sure, we have goals and things we want in the future, but to be grateful for where we are right now, that's really key. Okay, and then Luke just went recently to see um, Tony Robbins speak. And I'm sure Tony Robbins, sorry, my throat. Any personal development guru in the world is going to tell you if you want to achieve your goals, surround yourself with people who can support you. They say that you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So the third one is surround yourself with people who can support you. So coming on the Silver Method Life Training, you actually start becoming part of a community. You're about 20 or 30 people, you come on the program, and we start a kind of a club afterwards, which is for silver graduates. And we do workshops to build on the techniques that you've learned. And we get together, we discuss experiences that we have, or challenges, what technique do I use, this is what I'm facing, and we learn from each other. We also have accountability partnerships. So that's great, because you get to surround yourself with people in the training and after the training who have learned your techniques and they're on the same page as you. And I promise you, they encourage you, they motivate you, they help you stay focused and positive and motivated towards your goals. Because you need those three ingredients. Be positive, focused and motivated. Okay, so now we're staying calm and focused, we're centered, we're meditating, we're making sure we're not bogging our mind with bad negative thoughts. We're clear on our goals, we know how to achieve them. Limiting beliefs. This is probably the most important thing. This is so big today. It's honestly huge. And if we can learn to get techniques to overcome limiting beliefs and to work on ourselves, we can really achieve fantastic things and move forward in life where, we, where we're stuck, where we've got barriers. All of us are stuck in some area of our life. If you think about relationships, health, whether you want to shed a few kilos, whether it's career, whether it's finances, whether it's spiritual well-being, we all have areas where we can improve. Now, I'll say this. If you're in the place where you are today, and I want to call it a place called here, and you want some change in your life in some areas, and let's say you got those changes and you achieved those goals, and we call that a place called there, the only thing that's standing in the way of your place called here and that place called there are limiting beliefs. Anyone here want to earn more income? Okay, some of us, I'm sure we all do. So, I like this question. Not that it's about money. It's a measurable thing. If we wanted to earn more income, then our question would be, how much more do you want to earn? And then I'll say, how long have you been thinking about that? And if you've been thinking about it for a while, let's say a long while, and you haven't earned it yet, then I'll say, oh, why haven't you earned it yet? Why? You've been thinking about it for a while, you know you want more. Why haven't you earned it yet? Because you haven't done anything different. This is the underlying reason. It honestly is. I don't have to take my word for it. You can pick up any book on prosperity or abundance or wealth. They'll tell you that, just as an example, everything is, but money in particular, money is a mindset. So if you want to change how much you earn, you've got to first reprogram that set point. That blueprint says how much we're going to earn, how much we think we value, how much we deserve to be paid. So that's an example. Okay, so the first thing about limiting beliefs is we need to become aware of them. How to become aware of them? One question. How do you feel? How do you feel? If you can become aware of how you feel, 
you can start getting some clues and answers as to what your limiting beliefs are because they're not easy to uncover i said this already you often need a good coach now this isn't a difficult question how do you feel because you can only feel two ways you can feel good or you can feel bad I'm sure you have degrees on how good you feel and sure you may have degrees on how bad you feel but really there's only two ways so if you can get the awareness catch yourself you're not feeling good you're feeling angry you're feeling frustrated feeling depressed, I don't mind what it is, but you're not feeling good. Most likely there's something in there. There's a limiting belief either about yourself or someone else or the situation or the event that's taking place. Now you might not get the answer straight away, but there's a clue in there. Generally, that's a guide to help you if you're on your own and trying to work this stuff out. So one thing we can do with limiting beliefs is create evidence that we can do things. So here's a bit of an exercise for you. Take a sheet of paper. I want to write a resource date. Take, take about, this is an exercise which doesn't start and end. You can go on in your life. Take a piece of paper in a book that you're going to keep for a long time. And start to write down from the earliest memory you have, when you succeeded, when you were winning, when you achieved a goal, when you did something that made you feel good, some moment that you felt proud of yourself, and list those things out, and try and break them down into decades, from as early as you can remember, 0 to 10, what can you remember, 10 to 20, so on. List all these things for yourself, and I promise you, once you start this exercise, you'll be driving in the car, and another one will pop in your head. Grab that book and write it in. Another one will pop in. Keep adding to that book. If you take the time out and read those things and relax, you're going to find yourself getting into emotional state, which is what we call a resource state, where you feel like a winner. Those emotions can come back. If you closed your eyes and relived any one of those that's a really high point for you, you can actually get right back into that emotional state when you felt like a winner. And do you know how good that feels? When you can live that feeling, you feel confident. Confidence is huge. It gives us the motivation to keep going forward. So having that evidence, whenever we're not feeling good or there's something that's keeping us stuck and we want to know, how am I going to do this? If you read all that evidence about yourself, how you've overcome it, you can tell yourself, I can do this. I've done it before. I can do it again. And it also helps us when we do meditations to go back and think about things like that to create a resource state. I'll tell you this about limiting beliefs. That year and a half that was the worst year of my life. It's a very strong word. I don't like to use it, so cancel, cancel. But I really hated my job. I really did. So one of the things I was doing, as part of the exercise that I was doing, in my iPhone... I had a notes app, and I put a whole lot of positive affirmations there. I'm so happy and grateful that I've, you know, whatever it is, got supporting family, I've got these things, whatever. Happy and grateful, and, and intermittently between all these affirmations, I wrote, I'm so happy and grateful now that I absolutely love my job. Did I love my job? I just told you, I couldn't stand it. But I wrote that, not once, intermittently, so I had it about seven or ten times. I absolutely love my job. And I used to try and get into this resourceful state to get your emotions are very important. That's what creates things in your life. So what I used to do was I I hated this job that I was in. Cancel, cancel. So I went back to a job that I had in South Africa that I really did love. Thought about that for long enough. Started feeling that I love my job feeling. Kind of cleared it out and just hung out in that state and just kept telling myself, I absolutely love my job. And I said over and over, you know what? When my life turned around five months later, without exaggerating, I absolutely loved that job. Had the company changed? Had the people changed? Had the clients changed? No. But my belief about what was going on had changed. And I overwrote that. And that might sound a bit bizarre. And then people say, but Janine, you don't understand. I really hate my job. I've got a really terrible boss. And the people around me are horrible. And they're retrenching people. And the workload is triple on us. 
I say, guys, I'm telling you, when I said if you feel bad, there's a limiting belief there. That's an example. Nothing changed in the job for me. I just changed the belief I had, and I absolutely loved my job. And I loved it until I left. I really did. Okay. Then, the third thing is, if you're going to visualize and spend time visualizing it on a goal or something, apply the 30-day principle. I explained it already. Kind of mark on a calendar, mark on a book. Whatever you're trying to do to overwrite a limiting belief, <coughs> practice it every day for 30 days, mark it off. If you miss a day, go back and start again. I guarantee you, if you just focus on a clear goal every day and spend 10 minutes deep breathing and relaxing and visualizing on it, after 30 days, if you don't call me and tell me something significant has happened in your life, I'll be very surprised. I guarantee you, something will shift. And if you stay aware of what you're saying to yourself and using the cancel, cancel technique, things will shift for you. You'll be surprised at yourself. Things will change with your positive thinking. Okay, then the last one. So we clear, we stay in calm and focused, we clear in our goals, we know how to achieve them. We're becoming aware of our limiting beliefs and we're finding a way to start becoming not only aware of them but overriding them. Oh, by the way, something else that's a good idea here, I carry a small notebook in my bag. If I ever catch myself feeling bad and I realize there's something that I've said or thought that's a negative limiting belief, I write it on a piece of paper with a line in the middle and I write that negative thing that's coming to my head on the one side. On the other side, I just, I just write a positive affirmation that turns the thing around, whatever it may be. I hate my job, I love my job, that kind of example. Okay, better decisions and recognize opportunities. To be able to make better decisions is probably one of the key essential skills for being successful in life is to be able to be good at decisions. In the book of Napoleon Hill, Thinking Grow Rich, he dedicates a whole chapter to decisions. And by the way, Thinking Grow Rich is not just about money, it's about overall rich in life, well being, spiritually, everything. And it's about very similar to the silver method, it's all about the brain um, reprogramming. So, better decisions. If we could make better decisions in any area of our life, we'd be more successful. And being able to recognize opportunities. So how do we do that? There's two things. We need to access our creativity and our intuition. So when do you think you're most creative? Oh, high five. Spot on. We're the most creative when we relaxed. How many of you are trying to finish a project, write an article, I don't know, do something that you've got a deadline on and write a proposal you can't think, or that you've got writer's block? Take the pressure off. Go for a walk. Listen to some music. Or you just don't even finish it and you take a long, whatever, half a day off and you find yourself... I don't know, lying in a hot bath, and the best idea pops in your head. How many of you have had the best ideas in the shower? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Why is that? Because we're relaxed. We should learn from these things. We get our best ideas and our most creativity. And if we ask the question, if you have a problem in life, whatever your problem is, if you just ask the question, what do I need to learn to overcome this? That's it. What do I need to become to fix this? Something like that, a question. What, or what, should, what, what should I learn from this? Something like that. Just ask that question if you're really struggling with any area of your life. I can guarantee you, when you're most relaxed and least expected, something's going to pop into your head. You could be listening to a lovely piece of music. You could be watching a movie. You could be going for a walk, chatting with a friend over coffee. So, why we are most creative when we are, I'm um, sorry, when, the reason that we need to understand that our creativity is best when we're calm and relaxed is very important because the very first thing that we do is learn, we've got to learn a technique on how to stay calm and relaxed. So meditation, going back to step number one, 
if we meditate daily and you practice this and it becomes part of your life, you integrate it, it becomes who you are, you can actually access that resourceful state more and more. I just want to go back to this. In the silver method, when we do our meditation, so we start with helping people relax by doing this thing called the long relax, and I'm telling you it's long. It feels like hours, but it's 26 minutes. And while you're busy meditating there, you go deeper and deeper into the most relaxed state. And then what we do is we tell ourselves we're going to anchor this feeling of being so relaxed with a physical trigger. So we put our three fingers together. And we say, I'm going to remember this, and we anchor it. We do more meditations, more meditations. Eventually, you go from 26 minutes to be deeply relaxed to a few minutes. Do it again. And eventually, you can access that resourceful state in a few seconds. Just by putting your three fingers together. It's a trigger. It's an association we create with the mind, a state, and some physical trigger, whatever it may be. But we use our three fingers. And just to share a quick example. About two years ago, I had to do this talk at work for an audience of about 800 people. And I don't know why it happened, but while they're introducing me, I'm standing in the wings. I suddenly got all nervous, and my legs became jelly, and my heart started to pound. And my mouth was going dry. And I thought, how am I going to deliver this? You know, I'm not feeling in top form. And I just remembered the three fingers technique. I put my three fingers together. I took about two or three deep breaths. I promise you, I immediately became calm, centered, focused, well-balanced, excited about going out to talk. And I went out there and I delivered an excellent presentation. That's an example of creating a trigger. So the same way that we can access that as we at will, we can use it here. So let's say you need to make a decision, or you need to be creative, or you need to come up with an idea, or write that proposal, and you're struggling because you're so stressed and so busy, just go somewhere, take a few deep breaths, and even put your three fingers together in your desk, where your artwork doesn't matter, and just in a few seconds, you can go back to that calm, centered state and access that. And that can help you be more creative. Okay, intuition. This, I must tell you, is my absolute favorite part of the silver training. And this is the one key area that differentiates the silver method from any other training program in the world today. We don't know of any other training program that through a step-by-step -step process, helps you access, develop, and refine intuition. Now, intuition is a wonderful thing. Isn't it great if you just knew when to trust that feeling you had? Like, you get this feeling, you don't know if you should trust it or not. Or sometimes you just feel guided. You don't know what it is, but something just kind of nudges you to take that direction or to make that decision. Now, the thing about intuition is, how do we know if it's wishful thinking or true intuitive insight? Or how do we know if it's fear or intuition? Sometimes you can walk in, let's just say we're walking in the center of Sydney CBD at 11.30 at night. We've come out of a restaurant and we're alone. It's very dark, it's very quiet. And there's maybe just two or three of us. And, some, and someone says, I just got this feeling we should rather go around this corner. Now, is that intuition? That maybe there is something bad happening down there that we shouldn't go? Or is it fear of some past experience that says, you know, don't go there? How do we know? So what we do in the silver method is, on day three and four, is just intuition training, we play these games. They're really fun games. But the thing about these games is you get immediate feedback. So you know if your intuition is right on, or you're off the mark. And this creates what we call points of reference. So the more points of reference you have by practice, 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 the more you refine your intuition skills. I'll give an example of a point of reference. Every one of us in this room, I'm sure at some point, has picked up a cup of hot tea or coffee and burnt their lips. Sorry, to took a sip now. <laughs> that burning our lips creates a point of reference. So over time, you can go like this, and just the heat of the tea or whatever it is, and the steam, the sensation on your lips is a point of reference. It'll tell you this thing's too hot, don't take a sip. Or don't put your hand on the hot plate. That's an example of a simple point of reference. We have many of them. So we can develop these with intuition as well. And that's what the silver method does. So 
one of the best things you can have in life is this feeling of being guided. When you start making decisions, you feel comfortable. You know which way to go. You know, if this is the right business partner for me, should I go into business with him? Or what about, is this the right life partner for me? You know, you're going to marry the person and live with him forever. Is that the right thing for you? Or should I go this direction with that investment or that? Should I buy that house or not? When you can start to trust your intuition, your life really becomes almost like a cascading flow of good synchronicities. That feeling that I said when you're in the flow. That feeling when you feel like the universe has got your back. Okay, so when we do the silver training, just to expand on that, day one and two, which is silver life systems, is learning that whole toolbox of techniques, starting from staying calm and focused through everything for a specific purpose. As I said, there's one for headaches, there's one for goal achievement, there's one for problem solving. We have all these tools in our toolbox. But every single one of them progressively and systematically builds on each other to make us ready for intuition training. So that's why you have to do life systems before you can do intuition. Okay, so guys, that's really the four steps I want to cover off tonight. Stay calm and focused, being clear on your goals and how to achieve them, overcoming limiting beliefs, and being able to make better decisions and recognize opportunities by accessing our creativity and intuition. Now, the thing I love about the silver method the most is the power is in applying the knowledge. It's not in the knowledge itself. There's a lot of knowledge out there. There are many courses and programs where you go and you take notes and you get manuals and things like that. The Silver Method training is experiential training. You go there and you do every single technique. You're going to spend the entire four days doing the exercises yourself. You'll do them so many times. Or everyone's a different one. You get so much practice. When you leave there, you're self-equipped. You're self-reliant. You're self-sufficient. You can go on, on your own. And you do get a manual as well. So if you've missed anything or you can't remember a technique, the instructions are there and the reason why we do it is also there. Okay, so just, I'd like to end off, where is he? With this wonderful quote of the man himself who started this back in 1944, Jose Silva. He said, the greatest discovery you'll ever make is the potential of your own mind. And that's so true. We are resourced with everything we need to live a beautiful, successful and happy life. We just need to know how to access our potential, use more of our mind, and use it more in a focused way. Okay, so let me just see what I wanted to cover off here. So by the way, was that helpful for anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone got anything that didn't get before? Jan, anything new for you? You, Enrico, did you learn anything tonight? <laughs> you learned everything? How far? Alright, so guys, you know, if this has been helpful in any way, if um, you've been inspired or motivated, if this kind of interests you or excites you, or this resonates with you, the next step's up to you. We have got the life training coming up, as I said, on the 26th and 27th of November is Silver Life Systems. It's a two-week break, which, by the way, is fantastic, because you need two weeks to practice the tools that you need to just learn apply them in your life so when you come back on the 10th and 11th of December for the intuition training the first thing we do is we say any breakthroughs we learn from each other how we've learned the tools and we learn intuition training for those people with children you couldn't give your children a better gift the best students in silver we don't have an age restriction by the way of course the three month old isn't going to be and they're going to probably irritate me <laughs> I'm going to say, say noisy Okay, otherwise they're fine. But children like your age or 10 or whatever, fantastic, they're the best students, they learn the most. And by the way, this is a fact, the best intuition students in Silver, between 8 and 12. Jose Silver, back in the 1940s to 1966, all his, most of his research he did on 8 to 12 year olds. Because the, the responses, he knew it, it was unbelievable, they're, they're fantastic. You'll see, intuition training will be off the charts, and you'll be the hero of the class if you come. <laughs> okay, and then just to remind you, some people go on training like this for four days, and they leave there quite exhausted. You're not going to 
leave the feeling exhausted. You're going to feel the feeling energized. You're going to have more energy than ever because you're meditating a lot. You're going to have enough boom. You're going to feel positive. You're going to feel centered. You're going to feel excited about life. You're going to sleep well. And you're also going to leave there with a deeper sense of purpose. We do an exercise called sowing the seeds of purpose. It's a beautiful exercise. And when you leave there, you can always expand and develop that further. Okay, so you'll be confident, you'll be hopeful, hopefully, full of hope. Um, and you'll have the tools you know, to sustain your own development. Now, I just want to talk about these couple of benefits here that you need to know. The Silver Method training costs $1,500 for the four days. Okay, we do have an early bird special right now for $1,250. However, the point I want to make is, once you've done the Silver Four Day Program, the Four Day Immersion, Life Systems and Intuition, you can review the four day training anywhere in the world for the rest of your life for free. You only pay a C charge of like 80 bucks. I don't know any personal development program in the world that lets you redo the course, which is four days, at no charge. And the reason is, the silver philosophy or the intention of the silver method or silver international's intention, which comes from Jose himself, is to empower the individual to make the world a better place. And this is so true. If we become more calm and focused and centered and relaxed and better people and achieve our goals and be happier, don't you think we're going to be more pleasant to be around? Of course we are. Don't you think we're going to be nicer colleagues at work? Of course we are. Don't you think we're going to influence people by saying, you know, I've done this program and I've never slept better and my health is improved and I don't take tablets? Of course you are. You're going to share this with others. You're going to help others. If we become better, we influence our environment. We make our family better, our community better. So the long-term view is to really make the world a better place. And that's a, a benefit. So you can review anywhere in the world. The Silver Method is trained in 110 countries around the world. As I said, it's been around for 50 years. They've trained over 6 million people. It's tried and tested and stood the test of time. The other thing is, as I said, you get access to support programs. And there's also a conditional money back guarantee. The condition is that you come to the four days and you do the exercises. If you don't like them and think you've got no value, no problem. Give us back the manual. No questions asked, we'll give you back the money. Okay, seating is limited to 30, so we have um, individual attention for the class. So my friends, if this is something that you feel is the right thing for you, there is a sign-up sheet, you can fill it in. The early bird special lasts until the 10th <coughs> of October. Yeah. Yep, so it's all four days for 1,250. Otherwise, I hope you've got some value out of tonight. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this with all of you. And I really wish you everything of the best and a safe trip home. I'm going to be here for any questions that you have. Otherwise, good night and God bless. Thanks, Jermaine. Um, we've got some feedback for to fill out. If you can just take five minutes. Yeah. And um, we also